Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we are back again at Hillside Power Sport Repair, where today we have a Mitsubishi FD25 forklift with the S4E non-turbocharged diesel Mitsubishi engine. And we're going to put some injectors in it because it smokes like a big dog and has ever since we got it running about a month ago. We're going to start out by cracking these fuel lines and we are just going to crack the lines at the injector. We aren't going to pull them off at the injection pump. There we go through. I believe those were a 17 or a 19. That seems like it was pretty much it uh, for sizes. I think the injectors themselves were a 21. I got the battery off, got the lines off, and we're just going to kind of real gentle push them out of the way. Now notice that the injector stays on the side of the intake manifold are not in place anymore. I never put them back. I really haven't used it that much since. Now go ahead and there's a set of nuts here that goes over this fuel transfer bar. You got to pull them off all at the same time. Can't pull one off and then pull your part of the fuel transfer bar unless you've been in there and, and had rubber line replaced on a cracked piece of hose for your fuel return. Now we uh are in this thing and, and, and make sure that you pull that return line off when you're in there as one assembly. Just real gentle kind of pull all of it out at the same time and make sure that you get those gaskets. You probably won't need the gaskets but you know your new injector should come with them but you want to have them just in case. They make a good spare to have some of those little crush washers and I probably should have already done this but we went ahead and blew out all the area around the injectors just to get all the crud out. Now I noticed that the number four injector which is the front of the forklift or back of the engine had a little different feel to all the threads. The stuff around it was more like baked in place, didn't come loose as easy. Uh, I'm going to guess that at that time, or I had guessed at that time, something was a little different about that one. And as you start to look at these injectors, you'll notice that they all came out in one piece except that one. So we got the magnet out. We're going to get in there and, and get all the little pieces that we can, which there's, admittedly there's not very much in these pop-off style injectors. But it's still good to have the ability to pull these pieces out and make sure that when we get the rest of the assembly out, um, we are not in a position where we are able to drop anything down in the, the bore for the injector, because that would not be very much fun. So we got all the little pieces out now. Uh, looking at those a little bit. Uh, again, there's, you know, there's some little cups in there and some springs, and, and they're just kind of a little bit nasty. This thing sat for five years before we got it fired up. And uh, if you want to see more of that process, check one of our previous videos. But we do have, you know, a, a, a multi piece fuel injector, for lack of a better term. Um, I, I had been explaining to one of the guys that was there visiting the shop about how this injector worked a little bit. Uh, and there's one of the ones that was completely together, came out in one piece. You'll notice they got that little little tip on there, that little point. When they're new, they tell you not to even touch those with your hand. Any sort of alteration to that little point there will cause some sort of disruption in the uh, fuel atomization. And that's kind of a problem if you're trying to do that, right? So the first thing I did to get this injector out is went and got a socket in my 3H drive ratchet and thought, well, I'll just pull her out of there. And I was just wrong, is, is what this amounted to. And I cranked on her pretty good and decided that it was time that uh, all the heat from all that excess fuel, we're, we're going to have to stick an impact on it. I don't particularly want to use a breaker bar at this time. I like the vibrations from the impact. So we get the air impact out and just kind of let it rattle just enough to get it to turn is going to be our, our theory here, our operating conditions. We want to make sure that there's a lot of vibration because we're going to spray this down with penetrating oil and we want as much vibration in there to kind of break loose anything that is stuck in the threads and we want the penetrating oil to be able to get all the way down in it just as far down in there as possible as we go. So there's our penetrating oil. Just flood it. Just 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 put it all the way around it. Anything we can do to get a little more penetrating oil down around it and get it to sink in, we are not going to heat it. 
just doesn't sound like a good idea. I've got a fuel system open. I know it's just diesel, but still. So we put the old Ingersoll on it, and it's time lapse, but we did pull it out fairly slowly. We laid out the old injectors, and we're going to compare the new injectors just to make sure that we've got the right part. It looks suspiciously like we do have maybe not the exact part, but these are an aftermarket injector, and they're going to look just a little bit different, and that's okay. So we have the new fuel injectors, which I think... I may have ordered injectors for an S4L because they are a much more prevalent engine and I think Cat or Caterpillar uses those engines in some of their machines for the mid-species and the S4E is not as prevalent of a engine but we, we siphoned some diesel out into that old uh, St. Louis Rams cup and have her screwed this lid on and I had not been able to get my tripod and everything working as we moved into the new facility and I'm going to take this opportunity to apologize as this portion of the video is ridiculously bad. Uh, I never really condone fast forwarding through any of our footage but definitely on this one go ahead if you feel that you must because it is like seizure level bad. As we go through here we kind of I purchased this on uh, Amazon or something, and, and I just wanted to test the pop-off pressure on these because I thought that the old injector springs were probably weak at this point. They've got several hours on them, and I just kind of wanted to see, and I, and I was right. These things, the old ones popped off somewhere around four or 500 PSI. Uh, now, I, I'm doing voiceover on this, so, so you know that that's what happened at the time. I didn't know that so I will say if you buy one of these injector testers there is a little screw that's got a 10 millimeter head so it's probably an M6 and it's right there you kind of see where I'm at it's right behind the handle and the actual pump assembly or the upright mast of this thing I just cracked it and I did not read the instructions but I just cracked that screw open and held the handle down until I saw fair amount of fuel bubbling out of it and that seemed to be what we needed uh, not a big deal there that got us bled out and we got plenty of fuel now that you see it's starting to leak there at the joint between the injector and that nut again they popped off around 400 psi i did not spin the camera around it was kind of hot kind of nasty day with just being more or less soaked in diesel fuel and I didn't particularly want to bother moving the camera again and I as you can see with video quality paid the price for that um, I did notice that this nut did not go on near as easy onto the new fuel injector and I was a little nervous about that thinking maybe I was screwing up the threads on either the adapter for the tool or on the injector itself but turns out it was just one of them deals with new part meets new part and they didn't particularly like each other but it turned out everything was fine so we've got the new one on got fuel to the injector pump 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 now here's what you want to watch if you're actually watching this part and not fast forwarding i leaned on this both hands and you'll notice when i go slow kind of dit, 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 dit. It has a very specific pop-off pressure, and it was about a thousand psi, give or take. Um, again, a, a camera, especially something with slow motion, would have been great to have on that gauge. But I will say that the mist or spray pattern coming out of the new injector was considerably finer than the spray pattern that came out of the old fuel injector. And uh, I believe that that will do a couple of things. One, with the higher pop-off pressure, you're going to have better atomization. Um, two, with the nozzle being clean on the injectors, you're, you're just going to have a better spray pattern. And, and that's good. And I think all of this will kind of come down to less fuel entering the cylinders, which on this thing that is a little bit uh, doggy because it's had so much fuel in it, revs up a little slow the throttle response is a little slow I think this is gonna put us in a pretty dang good position on this and I, I know this is probably the most boring part of the video and uh, bear with me here I, I do have some things to 
to impart as we go. The biggest thing I'm going to tell you is make sure everything's clean and to make sure that that little bar that you see there where the fuel return line goes, make sure that that goes on as one assembly. It can't go fully on one injector and then on another and then on another. You can and, and do everything you can to keep from bending or twisting those little pieces of tubing. They crack super easy, and it's just not a lot of fun with any of it. So at this point, we're, we're hand starting everything. I did put some assembly lube on the injector itself to make sure it goes in nice and smooth. We uh, I just used a breaker bar to put them in, a short breaker bar, and kind of calibrated elbow for a torque spec. It worked pretty good. <laughs> and... Uh, there, there we have that. Uh, you will notice that those gaskets for the return line assembly are already in place. They were on the machine or on the injectors when we purchased them, and I just never took them off. Um, I left those nuts just kind of run about halfway down that keep that particular piece of equipment in place. And here you can see slowly tap, 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 tap all the way across. Got that on there, get these nuts started back on there. Mm -hmm. One piece at a time. And get the old end wrench out, there we go. Tighten some of this stuff up. Sharp Eyes will notice that earlier I tightened something with my multi-tool slash screwdriver before I started torquing down the injectors. I replaced the fuel filter and the water sensor in it at the same time just to make sure that we had every advantage for these new injectors to be able to do their job. So we are now tightening the return line and we're going to get the fuel line started good. When you start these fuel line nuts on this you want to make sure that once they're kind of started that the fuel line itself is is kind of pushed down into or centered into the injector. Every now and then you run into one that's tweaked and it'll tighten up crooked on the injector and spray really high pressure diesel fuel at you, which in my experience has never been good. So we're going to go ahead, get the battery back in it. Notice this super fancy battery hold down. Um, if this was a customer machine, I, I wouldn't have done this. However, it is my machine, and all expenses are spared if possible on this. Uh, we are actually thinking of putting glow plugs in it at some point in time in the next month or so because we haven't been able to put the air cleaner back on for any length of time because we have to ether it just a little bit to get it to cold start. Eh, happens. Be very careful using ether on diesels. If you're watching this, you probably already know that, but there's been a lot of machines severely screwed up with ether and gasoline on them. But anyways, we get this up there, get it tightened, make sure everything's run down. We're just pumping up the fuel system now. Want to make sure that we've got as much air out of it as possible. That vibration, that's the, trying to get the machine running. There it died again. Uh, just getting the air out of it, getting the air as it's starting running. And uh, there you go, folks. That's it. Thank you so much for watching us replace these injectors. Let us know if you have any questions. Feel free to use our affiliate links. And as always, thank you so much for watching Hillside Auto and Power Sport Repair.